everybody, welcome back. If you are new, welcome. My name is Courtney and I'm a final year PhD student at Imperial College London. In today's video, I'm going to be covering six steps of writing a research paper. As I said, I'm a final year PhD student and that means I have done quite a bit of writing over my academic journey, which is from my master's, undergrad and now in my PhD. I have to write several chapters which can count as research papers in of themselves and a PhD is one big giant research paper. So I'm going to share with you some of those six tips and six steps that I use to move from an idea to an actual paper. To spare you the time, I'm going to tell you what those are, which is identify your broad topic, then you need to identify the concepts and theories around that topic, conduct a literature review, then you need to decide on a direction of work, five, plan the research paper structure, and six, one of the hardest things to do, to write that paper. So let's get into it. The first and more easy of these six steps is identifying what your research topic and area is. That could be something that you love, you enjoy, you're interested in, itch interested in, or it could be it was just handed to you by your lecturer, supervisor, whoever it is, and that is a topic that you're working with. So once you've identified that topic, the next step for you is to have a brainstorm. Maybe it's a mind map of the concepts and theories that are relevant to your work. What do you know? What do you need to know? What others need to know to follow the research paper that you're going to be writing? Once you've identified some of those concepts and theories, your next step is to start to research, as the name suggests. Start looking into those concepts, understanding how they have been used, what the limitations are, um, how are you going to use it? And in that, we call this the literature review. So your third step is to conduct the literature review, viewing a substantive amount of literature for that paper on the different concepts, the different theories that have been applied to that area that you're researching. So when you start conducting your literature review, what is key is that you look for the definitions of the concepts, you understand how they have been applied, what are some of the challenges associated with them, what are some of the challenges associated with applying them, what are the limitations to different theories, and most importantly, while doing and conducting the literature review, make note of these points as you go along. What is very important when conducting a review is to identify those gaps in the literature what is still missing? What is missing that you are interested in? What is missing that you can contribute and how can you contribute to that? It could be that you want to apply a certain methodology to a different topic, apply a methodology that was used in a different area, field of study. It could be that you want to challenge what has been done altogether. Taking that approach when reading is going to help you to do the next step, which is identify your research approach and what your contribution to that field of research and that topic can be. So the qualitative research, a literature review, will generally feed into what is known as a theoretical framework. The theoretical framework defines the theories and concepts which help to say why the research is being done. Now that you have conducted a literature review, have an understanding of what's out there, the limitations and the scope that you can take, your next step is to define your research approach and your contribution. In defining that, there are a few things that you're going to do, which is your research question, what your hypothesis is, and these are really going to guide you as you go to the next step, which is to plan the research paper in of itself. So planning a research paper, I'm going to address it from two standpoints, scientific, science-based, engineering, STEM papers. A lot of them tend to follow that structure of back abstract, background or introduction, methodology, results, discussion, conclusion. But again, some more social science papers tend to, and policy papers like myself, tend to be broken down into unconventional subheadings, um, which is based on our different ideas that we're producing. And planning your research structure kind of have an idea in your head of how you want to finish. That question of how you want to finish is based, is somewhat based on your hypothesis. You hypothesize that this will be true or this won't be true. And that is how you can start structuring your thesis and breaking them into sections. To structure your research paper, you want to start with the broad overarching headings. That would be the background and introduction. And those are based on the literature review that you've conducted. So that would be the background to this topic is, why is it important? What are some of the challenges? What you're doing in your research and why? 
and then you state your research question and so forth. And then if it is the case, you go into the methodology, how you're going to apply it based on what you've read or what you know. Knowing how you want to finish is sometimes better than knowing how you want to start because it would help you to ask questions. What do I need to tell the reader so that they can follow in that next section? And it's good to have an idea of where you're going and how you want to end is because this helps you to keep that red trail or that common thread within your work which helps to guide the reader step by step as they're going through your paper. And the sixth step, one of the hardest steps for me and a lot of people is to write. Now when I mention in step three, which is a literature review, that you should keep writing and making notes of things, this is very important. It's going to really help you in this next step as you try to write. Writing throughout the research paper process is going to make sure that you have information ready at hand to put and fill into each of these sections. Writing can be made a lot easier if you plan and if you have that structure from step five because all you have to start doing now is filling in each of these sections and subsections with the information that you already have. So just to recap those six tips for writing your research paper, we have one, identify the topic, two, brainstorm and the concepts and theories that surround the topic that you need to be aware of, three, conduct your literature review, and if you are interested in seeing how to do a literature review, drop a comment down below and I'll try to do a video on that, four, def define your approach, your research question, and your hypothesis, five, Plan and structure your research paper around the main idea of how you want to end and your hypothesis. And six, just get to writing. So thank you for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. And I'll catch you in the next one.